All right, because I can't wait any longer, I'm going to tell you guys my first in a series of spooky videos, things that's happened to me in my life. And I'm old, so quite a few scary things have happened to me in my lifetime. And I'm going to give you a few of these stories. And I hope you enjoy them. And I should have enough stories to carry in once or twice a week, maybe, on up through Halloween. Just want to quickly let you guys know that on the box in front, you guys that have been watching our videos, uh, the two new guys made it. They made it through sparring. Uh, there was no unleashing hell on earth on these guys, but they, they both got hit pretty darn good. They both stopped in the middle of sparring. They had to. Uh, but they both continued, so that was a great thing. So, uh, all, all that's worked perfectly. So, what I was telling you earlier, and that that's the part I don't like, is when somebody doesn't make, make it. These, these two guys have made it, and how long if they stick around, I don't know. Can't guarantee that, but they got through the big test and that's always a good thing all right now on to the scary video and i'm gonna you know everything's on the fly here nothing's rehearsed or uh, anything like that here so i think what i'm gonna tell you is my first bigfoot type experience and I didn't see anything with my own eyes in this one, but this one's pretty darn good. Back, uh, I guess it was maybe the late 60s, or very early 70s. Uh, something happened at the uh, swimming pool that we were members of in our neighborhood. And I was fortunate growing up, we had a nice pool country club type thing sitting in the middle of nowhere, but only right outside the neighborhood, but surrounded by many, many acres to the uh, east uh, by maybe thousands of acres of woods and probably by a couple of hundred acres on each other side. So we had a gravel, long gravel road. Uh, the pool was new. The They had a bunch of other stuff there, tennis and whatnot. And, uh, but at the time it was a gravel road. And you had to go down this long winding road to go to the pool. Well, people kept seeing something while they were swimming out in the woods that were just beyond the gate of the swimming pool. And a couple of teenagers went, were down in there camping one day, and I was at the swimming pool uh, with my, my mom. I, I was so young, I don't think I started school yet. And I may have been uh, I had I don't think I had started school yet. I might have been in the first or second grade. I can't remember that where I was at in life, but I was uh, I was not a teenager yet. And two of the older te teenagers come up out of the woods from camping, and they were screaming and yelling, and they said, "We've seen something down." down in those woods and it was on its hind it was on two legs and it looked like a huge gorilla thing but it was huge it was very very tall and you know the adults around the pool because they come in and got the the manager of the place and uh and it's a pretty exquisite place but i remember that guy was talking and said hey Guys, I've seen something in the tree line down in there myself. And uh, I'll have a later story for you on this. 
where I was a little bit older and did see this thing. But anyway, at this time, uh, so people, we were freaked out at the pool, and even us as kids were thinking, a big gorilla. Now, I want you to keep in mind that the name of Bigfoot or Sasquatch wasn't even pre prevalent uh, to any of us back then at that time. So it must have been the late 60s. And because uh, I believe the Bigfoot movie came around in 72 or something like that. So it was probably the late 60s when this happened. And uh, uh, 69 or 70. But anyway, so we were scared as, you know, it was, I was a kid there, a lot of other people had their kids there. And, uh, I remember my mama saying, we got to go, we got to go. And uh, I got scared enough that I didn't want to stay at the swimming pool. I wanted to go home too. So I remember all that vividly. And I, I remember the adults talking and the manager of the place and a couple of the employees there. And it seemed like everybody had seen something. You know, at least the people that were working there all the time, that were there all the time, they were saying, yeah, we've seen something's going on there. And we're hearing these noises and things. So everybody just got up and left the pool. Well, you have to keep in mind, this was our, really our community pool. It was in our neighborhood. Uh, my dad, who died when I was young, uh, he, he was a hard-working, well, pretty well-off guy, so we were fortunate to be members to this place. And uh, so anyway, I, I don't remember. It could have been that evening, and it could have been on a Friday. I'm not sure. But a lot of the guys got together, the men in the neighborhood. And uh, this was back in a day that you, the law wasn't standing around to protect you. Uh, when something happened, you, you protected your own neighborhood, and your own area, your own acreage, and your own stuff. So a few of the guys got together that night. My dad was one of them. And... Uh, uh, my dad had a couple of pistols. He suited up with those and took one of his rifles out and uh, uh, and all the other men in the neighborhood, or not all of them, but many of them, they got together and they went out searching for this thing one night. And I remember uh, some time had Laps, maybe an hour, maybe two hours or so. And then we started hearing this pop, 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 pop in the background. And then it got to be in a bunch of pops. And it was them shooting down there. Uh, this place, once you got up the one block down the street, uh, the you had a road that went this way. And then on the other side of that road, is where that gravel road was going up about a mile to the swimming pool in the middle of those woods. So uh, we heard vividly all this, all this gunfire going on, hundreds of rounds going off. And Dad came back. One of the neighbor's men was with him, and they were in the front, they lived beside us, and they were in the front yard, and that the. The neighbor's wife went outside with their kids. Mama went outside with us kids. And they were talking and they said, well, whatever was in those woods, it's, it's gone now. It's done now. It's finished. And we're going to go out tomorrow. Because this was way in the, you know, it was in the middle of the dark. It was the nighttime. And they were going, we're going to go out tomorrow. So I'm thinking it was a Saturday because they did go out that next morning and uh, and they said we're going to go find, get its body and uh, they 
took one of my dad, my dad owned a furniture store. They took one of his trucks and then one of the neighbors had a big pickup truck and they took it too. And uh, they went down there because they was going to put the body of this thing in the back of the truck and bring it back. Well, they got down there and they knew where it was at and uh, all these guys were, uh, th th this is good to know too, all these guys were Korean War or World War II veterans. So they actually got a game plan together when they went out there. So they, they weren't uh, shooting at each other and they weren't shooting in the wind. Well, they got down through this place and uh, uh, where the body of this thing should have been and there was a massive amount of blood just all over the place. But this was back in a time where nobody thought, well, we need to get the high sheriff out here or police or whatever. They would have said you crazy. Of course, today they'd probably call you crazy, but there'd be researchers all over coming in from everywhere. But it wasn't like this back in, in that day and time. And... Uh, so we never really quite found out what the situation was. Uh, however, we all felt very calm, even though they, the body was not there. Uh, there was no trail leading out uh, with blood. They looked, they looked for that. Because, you know, you hit a, you hit a uh, any, any kind of big game, if it gets up and it walks off, or if it's hauled off, uh, there's going to be a trail of blood to you get up out of them woods, you see. And uh, there was none of that. There was just blood in the area, but nothing there. And nothing to indicate that anything came in and ate anything. So uh, we were all content and fine for almost a year. And then winter came and went and then spring was coming on and towards the end of spring when it started getting hotter i got another story for you uh where probably 50 of us including myself really saw something major in these woods and i'll give that story to you a little later on i'm going to keep giving these stories on up through Halloween. I got a lot of stories to give you, uh, personal life experiences and such. I believe tomorrow I'm going to give you, you guys, or not tomorrow, but this coming next week, I'll give you a UFO story that uh, still blows my mind to this day, and I was right in the middle of that episode, as uh, still as a kid, but uh, uh, I was older, and this was quite a few years after this event. And then maybe I'll go on and give you the other story, but this is the Chris Chris story, and uh, this actually happened, and we didn't know to call this thing a Bigfoot or we didn't know, nobody knew what to call this thing or the sightings of this thing. And someone attributed the Chris Chris to it and it stuck. So uh, this is my Chris Chris story. And uh, if you were from the neck of the woods that I'm from, uh, you will have probably heard of heard of this legend that I lived through. So uh, I'll give you a new story uh, next week. Uh, I think the UFO story is probably the biggest story I got. The most involved people, uh, authorities, and this was a big, big thing. And I'll probably tell that story next week. If I don't, I will tell you the next Chris Chris story, uh, which elevates. Oh, boy, does it elevate. And uh, the boxing's going good. Everything went good. 
uh, with that. Everything's going good around here. We want everybody to know we love you. Uh, we even love our enemies. Uh, I want to finish this video with, uh, as normal, Christ is our King up in around here. And that is our King, and we know He's the King of Kings, and He is our God, and we worship Him, and we place Him on high. And we wish you come over here to our camp and see fit to do the same. Much love to you all. If I don't get another video out this week, I hope everybody has a great weekend.